This screen measures about 110 feet in width, and it's about six stories high. It's a very large screen, one of the largest driving screens in the state of New York. It is. It's not your average screen. It's uh, no matter where you sit, you get a great view. This place erupts when you have two big movies. I mean, you pay $8 for two movies. You go to the mall, you pay 10, 11 bucks for one movie. This is really the way to see a film. When my projections runs a show here, it's a thing of beauty. It is honestly one of the things that defines summer for me and now for my family. I have really fond memories of growing up, packing the entire family into the station wagon with blankets and pillows and uh, going to the drive-in and watching just bigger than life. This has been a family operation that we took over in 1955. Before that, we had a, a drive-in in Hyde Park and a conventional theater in Hyde Park. We've been here a long time, that's for sure. I've been working here for 13 years. A friend of mine was projectionist here. He kept asking me to come and run the snack bar, and I've been here ever since. I've been here about 17 years. I know the family since high school at the ticket booth and doing the lawn mowing and the general maintenance. I am one of the projectionists at the Overlook Drive-In Theater. I'm also a big movie fan, big movie buff, which is kind of what brought me to the Overlook. I have been projecting for a number of years now, but usually in indoor theaters. This is really the first time that I've ever worked at a drive-in movie theater, and it's a, it's a very different experience, actually. My job here is projectionist and also the marketing coordinator for Overlook as well as Hyde Park. Yeah, when I was a kid, I worked in a movie theater. I uh, got a job as a popcorn person when I was 15, and then I worked my way up to projectionist and then uh, assistant manager and manager of a twin screen, and then I also managed and was projectionist for a six screen and then a 10 screen. I like the drive-in better, mostly because I like to be outdoors. It's not the stale, air-conditioned environment, so I prefer the, the drive-in. Alrighty, sorry about that. Hello, Overlook Drive-In. Uh, we have a double feature. We start with uh, Premium Rush at 7.30, and then we have the main feature, Resident Evil well, Retribution at 9.15. Come on. <laughs> Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, so oh, that's a good boy. What they're doing in the film industry now is that they're switching to everything to digital. And as a consequence, you have to get certain equipment to be able to, to show things in digital. And if we don't switch, they're not going to provide us with film. I would be very sad to see this drive-in theater close. We're running on a 110-foot widescreen, and seeing, you know, a good action movie or a science fiction movie on something that large, it just adds a completely different dimension to your movie-going experience because it's just almost overwhelming. I mean, there are certain things that you do every summer. If there were no more drive-in, it would definitely be sad. You know, it's much easier to come see a drive-in movie and hang out with people and really feel like you're having that shared experience than um, at a theater where all the, you know, the chairs are all already lined up for you. You can't arrange your own seating. And um, yeah, that would just, it would definitely be something to miss. You have people walking by and looking in and looking at the equipment and the platter and the light that's coming, you know, that's dancing around in the booth, which in a, in a regular indoor theater, you don't get to see that much because usually the projection booth is kind of tucked away up high or far, far back, so you, you rarely ever get to see that. So our big problem at the end of this season is just whether it's worth investing with no real benefit other than if we don't do it, we won't get the film. And uh, we'll probably be forced into it. The problem that I'm foreseeing with, with digital is that, you know, I mean, it's been around for less than 10 years, I would say now, as a standard. They say you can push a button and it's good to go and you don't even have to be in the booth to push the button, so. In that aspect, it's a little 
a little iffy as to as to what it's going to mean as far as the projection is. Thankfully for me, I kind of do the marketing too, so hopefully I'll, they'll still need me for that. There's just something about holding a roll of film in your hand and pulling it out and seeing the frames and you know the opening logo, let's say. Uh, it, it's it's more fun to me. It's pretty much going to be a box that shoots light. There's not going to be any movement. You'll see a computer screen, and that's going to be pretty much it. And you know we've gone from 2K to 4K. Now they're talking about 8K projection. How many times are they expecting theaters to upgrade to another projector over the course of a decade when they have been used to running off of the same machine for 60, 70, 80 years in some cases? Open around the end of April and close the end of September. Used to be a little longer. You know, there's a lot of a lot of competition in this industry, and for anybody trying to make it in the uh, entertainment world, so uh, that's what happens. We have a lot more space in this booth now. This is a 2K cinema projector. This particular model is designed specifically for drive-ins for large screens up to about 100 feet. This is how they send us the films, the trailers. It's just a hard drive, that's all. You plug it into the computer, copy it in, that's it. This is pretty much your playlist. On the left you have all the material that's currently ingested in the machine. We have trailers, we have ads, we have commercials, we have features. My work here has become a lot simpler, but also a lot less. It's not as interesting anymore, because right now, all that's pretty much it is you push play, and that's all you need to do. Since the industry-wide conversion to digital, there's no more of this. It doesn't get to send out anymore, so you have to go digital or you go dark. For about a year now, um, the industry has completely forced the digital format, DCP, onto the industry. On the upside, for me at least, um, I'm still a projectionist, because I did take over one of the original machines from the drive-in theater. It's cheaper to just throw it out in the garbage than to recycle it or cart it off or do something with it. I decided to help the drive-in theaters a little bit by taking some of the equipment out and making further use of it um, to rebuild it into a conversion system so that I can now take their old films, intermissions and announcements, and make them available for them in the digital cinema package. And it's kind of amazing, it actually, it, it still does have that film quality to it, which I kind of like. It's like the first, first time I ran these, people were like, oh, you got your 35mm system back, and no, it's digital. So that's kind of nice to know that, that people think it's still film, when it, really, it, it's not. This is one of the ones that the customers always enjoy. From 16 millimeter. Nothing can really replace the drive-in. You go with your friends or your family and you can all just hang out and relax and watch the movie. And it's a very good time. Yeah, I, I come to the drive-in just to keep it going, actually. I don't, and I would hate to see it go away. We've discovered that digital projection creates whole new reasons to go to the drive-in. Imagine an independent film festival or a video game competition on the big, big screen. At this point, I'm pretty sure there are more possibilities that we don't even think of, but I'm sure somebody's gonna come up with another good reason to come to the drive-in. The drive-in, we were, you know, we did our job the correct way, I think. I'm proud of the way we've operated it because we, whatever problems we've had, we've managed to survive them somehow something that I know I'm going to do with my kids every summer. I love it, and I'm glad that it's still here. I really love the people who come here. They're very, uh, they're so grateful that we're here. It's a family affair, usually. They bring their children. 
I feel I'm really making people happy. It's a nice feeling.